Hello, my name is Kathy Tang, and at the time of this recording, I was one of the cardiology pharmacy residents at University of Maryland. As part of the Atrium Cardiology Collaborative's Under Pressure, a focus series on hypertension, I will be discussing the hypertension treatment algorithm today. In 2014, the 8th Joint National Committee, or JNC-8, released evidence-based recommendations on treatment thresholds, goals, and medications in the management of hypertension in adults. As part of these guidelines, a treatment algorithm was included. For the rest of this presentation, we will discuss each part of this algorithm in more detail. Before initiating any medical therapy, lifestyle modifications should first be pursued as seen as the first step of this treatment algorithm. Lifestyle interventions include smoking cessation, controlling blood glucose and lipids, moderate to vigorous physical activity about three to four times a week, and eating a healthier diet with reduced sodium intake of less than 2,400 milligrams per day and moderate alcohol consumption. One of the ways to achieve a healthier diet is the DASH diet plan, which was designed to lower blood pressure by encouraging a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, low fat or non-fat dairy. It includes mostly whole grains, lean meats, fish and poultry, as well as nuts and beans. Focuses on foods with high fiber and low to moderate in fat to lower cholesterol and makes it easier to lose weight. After optimizing lifestyle interventions, the treatment algorithm guides pharmacologic medication therapy selection, first based on if the patient has concomitant diabetes or chronic kidney disease, or CKD. Let's focus on patients with CKD first. Guidelines recommend a target goal blood pressure of less than 140 over 90 in millimeters of mercury. For patients with CKD, regardless of race, initial therapy recommendations are to initiate an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin II receptor blocker or ARB. For patients with diabetes, the blood pressure goal is also less than 140 over 90. Unlike CKD, for patients with diabetes, the initial medication therapy recommendation varies depending on whether the patient is black or non-black, mostly because the pathogenesis of hypertension is different between racial groups due to varying factors such as salt retention, hormonal systems, and cardiovascular risk factors. And as a result, medications have different efficacy and blood pressure lowering in different racial groups. For example, in the all-hat trial, both the, the thiazide type diuretic and the calcium channel blockers were more effective than ACE inhibitors in lowering blood pressure in black patients. Correspondingly, the JNC-8 treatment algorithm indicates thiazide type diuretics and calcium channel blockers to be initial therapies for black patients. For non-black patients, thiazide type diuretics, ACE inhibitors or ARBs, or calcium channel blockers may be considered as initial medication therapy. These are the treatment recommendations for patients with CKD or diabetes. What about patients who do not have either of these conditions? For the general population, target blood pressure goals differ depending on age. For those 60 years of age or older, target blood pressure is less than 150 over 90 millimeters of mercury. For those younger than 60 years of age, target blood pressure is less than 140 over 90, similar to the goals for patients with CKD and diabetes. Initial therapy recommendations are also dependent on the patient's race, with thiazide type diuretics or calcium channel blockers recommended for black patients and thiazide type diuretics or ACE inhibitor or ARB or calcium channel blockers for non-black patients. As we see from this algorithm, Initial recommendations differ depending on concomitant conditions as well as race. However, JNC-8 does not specifically reference compelling indications similar to those mentioned in JNC-7. But it is still important to consider a patient's concomitant medical conditions to identify the most appropriate therapy based on evidence demonstrating the benefits of specific therapies in the associated condition. In the next few slides, compelling indications will be discussed in more detail. As the treatment algorithm indicated, for patients with chronic kidney disease, ACE inhibitors or ARBs are recommended as initial therapy as they are more effective in reducing proteinuria, 
as well as slowing progression of CKD compared to other agents and should be considered as the initial recommendation for hypertension management in patients with CKD. For patients with diabetes, ACE inhibitors or ARBs should also be considered as initial therapies, as use of an ACE inhibitor is associated with a reduction in the combined outcome of myocardial infarction, stroke, and cardiovascular death. Thiazide type diuretics are also beneficial in patients with diabetes and should be considered as an add-on therapy for patients requiring additional blood pressure lowering agents. This was seen in the pre-specified diabetic subgroup of the ALL-HAT trial, where use of chlorthalidone reduced the primary endpoint of fatal coronary heart disease and myocardial infarction. Lastly, calcium channel blockers have been shown to reduce cardiovascular disease events compared to placebo in several trials and can be the next therapy to consider in patients with diabetes. For patients with coronary artery disease, first-line therapies to consider are beta blockers and ACE inhibitors. Beta blockers for their benefit in reducing heart rate and therefore reducing oxygen demand and symptoms of angina, and ACE inhibitors for their reduction in cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, and stroke. As sequential therapy, thiazide type diuretics such as chlorthalidone are highly effective in reducing blood pressure and preventing cerebral vascular events. Calcium channel blockers can decrease coronary resistance and improve coronary perfusion. However, of note, Non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers can decrease heart rate and when used in conjunction with beta blockers can increase the risk of bradycardia and heart block. Therefore, dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers are generally preferred. For patients with a prior history of ischemic stroke, thiazide diuretics or ACE inhibitors have been shown to reduce recurrent stroke and should be considered as initial therapy. For patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, the heart has a decreased capability of maintaining sufficient cardiac output to maintain adequate tissue perfusion to the rest of the body. As a result of decreased perfusion, neurohormonal systems such as the sympathetic nervous and the renin angiotensin aldosterone systems are activated as compensatory mechanisms to increase blood flow to the tissues. However, these compensatory mechanisms over time may lead to abnormal ventricular remodeling, further left ventricular enlargement, and reduced cardiac contractility. To combat these neurohormonal activations, heart failure therapies should be optimized, including the use of beta blocker, specifically metoprolol succinate, carvedilol, or bisoprolol, as these three beta blockers have been shown to decrease mortality in this patient population. An ACE inhibitor ARB as well as an aldosterone antagonist. These three agents should serve as the initial therapies in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. For patients with heart failure and no or mild renal failure, thiazide diuretics may be considered as sequential therapy. For moderate to severe heart failure and renal dysfunction, loop diuretics are often necessary to control volume retention, though it has not been shown to decrease mortality. For African Americans or those intolerant to ACE inhibitor or ARBs, a combination of hydralazine and nitrates should be initiated. Agents that should be avoided include clonidine, unless refractory to all other agents, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, and other alpha-1 blockers, which either increase afterload or decrease contractility and can worsen the patient's heart failure. For patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, there are no compelling indications and blood pressure management should follow that of a patient without heart failure. After choosing the initial therapy, different approaches may be taken. Initial therapy may be maximized before adding a second agent, or a second agent may be added before maximizing the first medication, or two medication classes may be started at the same time, either separately or as a fixed dose combination. If blood pressure is not a goal, first reinforce medication and lifestyle adherence, then using a medication class not previously selected, add and titrate a second type of agent, either thiazide type diuretic or ACE inhibitor or ARB or a calcium channel blocker. Additional medication classes may also be added, such as hydralazine and clonidine, and a referral to a physician with hypertension management expertise may be made.
Thank you for joining and please refer to our video for treatment goals in special populations.